time to figure out what the captain's ship looks like. Because what I've built so far is only a portion of the ship. And I can't think of a better way to show that than with a you are here map, kind of like you would see at a mall. But I can't make a map until I know what the ship looks like. And I don't know that yet. So let's build a spaceship, a small one, and, and then we'll make a map. I started by sketching out this design. I know it looks a little fish-like, but I am okay with that because in the end, I want the captain's story to be very tied with the ocean. And it kind of evolves from this sketch, so don't get too attached to it because it looks a little different in the end. I'm using a mixture of paper clay and just paper to get the fine details of this spaceship. This was a little daunting because I had to keep things fairly symmetrical as I was doing this because I did want it to look like a machine. When I sculpt, I'm a lot more used to sculpting organic things and so to sculpt something that's more mechanical is intimidating. The nice thing about paper clay is once it dries, if it does crack, you can take some paper clay and put a lot of water on it and you can smush it into the cracks and cover them up. So this was a good way to go really slow in this process and make sure I liked the shape of everything as I went along. A lot of sanding helped out with this too. So once I had a basic interior shape or the body shape of the ship, I could move on to adding some details. The next item on the list to define the ship's profile were the wings. I'm using a post-it to sketch out how big they should be compared to the body. I'm going to be making these out of matte board so that I can cut them with a straight edge and make sure that they look as mechanical as possible. I'm also going to be adding some tabs so that I can attach them to the body of the spaceship fairly easily and know that they're not going to just fall off. I only had to make one wing pattern and then I could flip it over and trace it so that they were identical on both sides of the ship. I also made a second layer for the front set of wings so that they had a little bit more definition and weren't completely flat. After gluing that all together, I could add them onto the ship. I marked out roughly where I thought the tabs needed to be inserted. I don't want them to be flat against the work surface, so I raised them up a little bit, and then I used my craft knife to carefully cut into the paper clay. This will allow the tab to be inserted so that I will have a wing that is connected really, really well and up against the body of the spaceship. I'm going to make sure that I can get all of these wings in place, and I like their placement before I start gluing anything in. But once I'm happy with them all, I'm going to be adding tacky glue and carefully pushing them into place. And then I'm going to let that dry for a while so that I know they are secure. Now I can start working on the front of the spaceship. This in my drawing looks like several layers of thin material. And so the best way for me to get that look is with paper. And I'm going to be using just plain printer paper because that is going to bend the easiest and get the curve that I'm looking for. I'm gluing it in place and I'm not going to worry about the tabs of paper at the bottom. We'll be covering that up later. And then I just continue to add little bits of paper until I'm happy with the look of the front of the ship. I will admit I did have to cut these out a few different times, just trying to make sure that it was what I wanted it to look like. This is very much a figure it out as you go type of process. So once that was done, I had two layers. I did add one more layer, but I'm not going to show you the entire process of that because it's very repetitive, but I think it's starting to get the look that I wanted. I also added some bits of toothpick up inside so that the paper was a little bit stronger. Now I can do something very similar to the back of the ship. Both the front and the back have a very similar look to them. This is again the process of laying down paper, gluing it in place. I added a little bit of mat board in there for the final layer to give it more of a look as if there's some kind of propulsion system at the back. Because I'm using computer paper for this and it is notoriously thin, I need to give it a little bit more strength by covering it with a layer of Mod Podge. I'm doing this very carefully and trying to keep any giant globs of Mod Podge off of it so it dries quickly and stays in place. 
then I can move forward with adding other shapes to the body with some more paper clay. In my original drawing, I had this bump up area, which I imagine is where the bridge is. I do plan to cover this with paper as well. So right now I'm just trying to get the general shape and keep it somewhat symmetrical. And at some point I spilt my water, but I was so focused on the ship, I did not even notice. There was also this other bump out piece, so I added that as well. And now I can start adding the paper on top. I think this is going to give it a more finished look. I don't have to worry about it being smooth. It's just going to blend in with the other paper that I previously added to the ship. For those of you that may be wondering, yes, this was a very tedious process, but honestly, I enjoyed it. It was kind of a um, discovery moment for me, trying to figure out, can I actually make this, and will it look good at the end? <laughs> so, uh, you'll be the ones to let me know if I actually succeeded in that. I need to add some masts to the top of the ship. I'm going to be using toothpicks for that, and I used a hand drill to drill into the top of the paper clay. I am going to be making these a little bit longer than they were in my drawing. The purpose for this is I do want some similarities to the sailing ships that the captain has as models in the lower part of the captain's quarters. And so by adding some masts and sails, I think this will draw back to that comparison. The sails I've added here are just more computer paper that I cut to be the right size. And I'm going to cover those with Mod Podge as well. This will ensure that they are connected to the masts and it gives them some more strength, just like the previous paper that I Mod Podged. Now I can start the fun part of greeblying up the side of this spaceship. And I just use bits of mat board, little bits of paper, and some of it will be symmetrical, some of it I'm trying to keep symmetrical, and then there'll be parts of it that are not, because the inside of the spaceship I don't think will be symmetrical either. So I'm just trying to give, trying to keep it general so I don't have any rules when it comes to making the map, but I also want to make it distinctive enough to know that this is a very specific ship, this is the captain's ship. Now it's time to add the bits to the bottom of the ship. So I guess a undermast. I don't, I don't know if that's the correct term. Okay, I just looked it up and it's the keel. The keel is the part that goes underneath the ship. However, this is going to be a very large keel. So there may be some kind of other term that better describes it. But there's, I imagine this is where a lot of the engine rooms are going to be and where a lot of the propulsion to move the ship forward is going to come from. I'm using some mat board on either side of the toothpick to create a little cavity that I can put some more mat board pieces in to look like the keel that I drew in my original drawing. At this point, I still wasn't completely happy with the front of the ship. Something about it just didn't look right to me. So I'm adding this piece onto the front and I'm hoping it will look a lot more like the profile of a sailing ship because it has that shape to it. Um, I also thought maybe now it looks like a rhinoceros dolphin. So you'll have to let me know <laughs> what you think it looks like in the comments down below but I'm going with this piece added to the front. I think it gives it a lot of character. And what I was just showing you on screen are all the little bits I added. Those pieces are not symmetrical and I just kind of added them wherever I thought it could do with some kind of panel look. I'm also adding a few holes with my drill before I start to paint. I think it'll just give it a little bit more interest to have these little details. It'll look like a more complicated ship if it has some of these different pieces in different places. Like most things I paint, I'm doing a base coat of black and then I'm going to cover it with a metallic silver. This is where you can really start to see some of those details come out. I really enjoyed painting the ship and trying to figure out what does it actually look like? What are the colors? And it had to be a lot of brown, a lot of brown and copper because that's what is inside of the captain's quarters. I wanted the outside of the spaceship to still have the same feel as the inside of the captain's quarters so it looked like they could be in the same universe. 
And of course, this is going to be a model in the project that the captain made, so it may not perfectly reflect what the ship looks like, but it's going to be a close replica. So I don't have to worry about getting it too perfect. Now I did have some suggestions from my patrons to add sails to the top of it and we discussed that these would probably have to be retractable sails so that while the captain was flying through space they weren't causing any problems with that process but also this ship could be seen from the side from a distance sailing across the ocean and still look like some kind of earth ship kind of like a camouflage from a distance. I attached these with tacky glue and then covered them with Mod Podge again to protect them. And this is going to be painted with some antique copper. I think this is going to be a really cool contrast against the silver base of the ship and make it look m more like the sails are part of the ship and not like a fabric addition. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm trying, it's kind of flustering to try and, and say exactly what's in my brain at the moment. I also, of course, had to age the sails a bit because they've been up for a while as the captain's been going around the world. And this is the final look of the ship. I am pretty happy with it, so I'm going to make a base. I'm still not quite sure where this ship model is going to go, but to keep from me having to keep it stored on its side where it may possibly get damaged, I'm going to go ahead and make a base for it. I'm using bits of mat board and cutting them into different sizes, trying to figure out what I want the base to look like. I think it's just going to be a two-tiered base, and I didn't know if this was going to work. I was lining up some mat board on this um, cutter to see if I could cut them all at the same time, and it actually worked, so <laughs> I was pretty excited about that. Any way to make cutting mat board easier is amazing. Then I could just start gluing the pieces together and build up the base. Keeping things flat while it dried is going to be the key to this part. I'm also using some flush cutters to cut the edges. I think it's just going to give it a more refined look. And I'm doing that to both tiers before I glue them together because it'll be hard to do it after they're glued together. And then I'll just be using some sandpaper to round out the edges to give it that more refined look than just a flat edge. I can mark out where the toothpick is going to go into the base. I am going to have to cut off the tip of the toothpick, but that's okay. I'm hoping I don't have to glue these two pieces together because I would like it to be more of a temporary holding space until I can figure out where specifically this ship is going to go. And they fit snug enough that I do not have to glue it. It will hold on its own, so I'm very happy with that fit. So now that I know that will work, I painted it black, and I can go ahead and give this ship a resting place for now. And that place is going to be inside of the captain's quarters, although I imagine it will eventually end up in more of the spaceship section of the project. But I do like to imagine the captain sitting at her desk inside of the 17th century portion, building this little ship. Okay, the spaceship is done, but before I make the map, there's a couple other things I want to do in the meantime. First, I promised you I would show you a complete copy of the book I wrote and mentioned in the previous video, I'm trying to keep the shine off of the cover, before it had a proof line across the front. But this is the book I wrote based off of the cardboard house, and the illustrator is the very talented Amanda Gadden. I will link items of hers down below as well so you can check them out. She included the cardboard house within the story, and at the end I talk about the cardboard house project. Uh, so if you were part of that journey, that journey that started in 2020, <laughs> you might be interested in picking this up, or if you have any friends that enjoy children's books or any grandchildren or children that would enjoy this, you can check it out. I will put a link below. I really enjoy adding stories to my projects, and so my hope is this is just the first of many books with a project focus to come.
The second thing I need to do is finish the litter box that I worked on in a recent live stream. I added quite a bit more to it, so I wanted to include it in a video instead of just saying, here's what I did in the live, here's how it looks now. First, I'll give you a little wrap up of what went on in the stream in case you're not a live stream viewer, and then we'll get on with the project. As always, I will make sure to gray out my face cam and any other stream elements that might be distracting, but this was a very fun live stream, so you can go back and check it out if you want to see the whole thing. I decided to build this litter box out of recyclable pieces I had in my recyclable collection, and of course I had Centauri there to make sure that I was staying in the right scale and the right size for his use. But these are some little can connectors, like they connect cans of soda together and they work really well for all sorts of spaceship items. I also used some findings that had been sent to me and some straws to make it look like this was more of a machine and I imagine this machine being built out of spare spaceship parts. Maybe the captain was you know just kind of tired of scooping the litter box and was like okay we can make this more efficient. I also made a control panel for the litter box so that either the captain or the bots can make sure that it's constantly clean for Centauri. Before I ended the stream, I wanted to paint it just so you could get an idea of how it might look painted. So I did a very rushed and rough job of that. And in a second, you will see that I end up changing that all up anyway. So after the stream, this is what I was left with. A little litter box which I do really like the shape and an unattached control panel. I had several suggestions to also make some kind of composting system so I had these pieces also in my recycle bin. I think I don't know what these are maybe some kind of thread spool. I'm going to glue those together to make some sort of interesting shape and I like the idea of it being a little bit taller than the litter box. I think just together they'll look really good. So there'll be these two pieces that are attached and working together to make this an easier piece for the captain and Centauri to keep control of. When I had actually placed it into the project, I realized that the silver was really blending in. So I wanted to paint it with something, some other kind of color. So I went with white. I thought that would really brighten it up and for those who were interested enough to search out this piece it would be easier to see the details. So I'm going to be painting the composting tower to match. And then of course I decided to age it. Here's how it looks before I age it. Um, just brace yourselves for what I'm about to do here. I will kind of show you my emotions as this was happening. Um, yeah, here's... <laughs> Here's a little reenactment of my emotions at that moment. I had just spent so long painting this piece white and now it looks just so poo smeared. <laughs> It's so gross looking and for some reason I kept painting. I am panicking in that moment when you saw me painting. So finally I stopped. It was like my brain was panic painting. Uh, I finally stopped and decided okay I just need to get a paper towel and see how much of this I can get off. Now I do want it to be aged so I did leave some of it but most of it I got back off. It was so so bad. I don't I don't know what went wrong here. Um, I always say less is is the way to start when it comes to aging because you can always add more but for some reason I just added everything all at once. So then I made a wash with some white paint in it and went over all of these areas again. This is going to help kind of lighten the brown places because like I said I do want it to look older but I did not want it to look that gross. So I covered it especially because of the fact that it's a litter box. It does not need to be that gross. I just want it to look old not gross. So I covered the cat litter box and the compost tower. I tried to do the same techniques on everything so that it looked like it was one piece and was you know, the same age and everything. Then I covered everything with some Mod Podge to try and kind of 
keep my place, I guess like save my progress. And then also I'm covering the inside with Mod Podge because when I add the cat litter process on the inside, it was going to keep it from making any of the cardboard pieces soggy. For the litter, I am going to be using sand mixed with some Elmer's glue, and I did mess this part up as well. I'm putting way too much glue into the sand, and because of that, you're actually not going to be able to see the finished litter by the time this uh, video is coming out, because it's still not dry at the time that I'm doing this voiceover, and I don't want to put anything new on top of something that's still wet. This is probably going to take a few layers to fill up, and I'm not even sure if I like the sand as the final look. So stay tuned for the finished litter in a future video. In order to attach the compost tower to the cat litter box, I'm using some more of these bendable straws, and luckily this thread spool or whatever it is had a hole that was just the perfect size in the top and that made it easy to connect these two together. So I tried to figure out where the pipe would make the most sense to go. Now it's not actually connected to the back of the box. I'm not worrying about that because no one will ever see the back. I'm just trying to get the general look of how I think it should work together. Then I could continue to paint it and blend it in with the previous process I had done on the litter box itself. Now to go along with the box, I decided to create the litter, like the litter storage, because when someone looks back there and if Centauri is not back there, they may not immediately understand what's going on. So I decided to make a box and um, I sketched out my own box because I was too lazy to go find a pattern and the flaps don't really work on this, but that's okay. I just keep going. Sometimes you can kind of fake things even if they're not perfect. So I cut this out of chipboard, which is like cereal box material, and started gluing it together. And that's when I realized that my flaps were way too short to actually close the box. But in my mind, I picture that the captain picks up this compostable kitty litter every now and then when she visits Earth or any other planet that might have it. I made a fake little lid to go on the top. And this is what's going to finish off my kitty litter container. And I think it looks okay. It looks a little rough, but you know, it's not going to be in perfect condition the entire time it's in use. I use my laser cutter to cut out a stencil that I think will work on the front part of the box. And this ended up being kind of an interesting experiment because I first did the stencil by laying down a little bit of white acrylic paint. I wanted it to have some green text on the front of it. And I thought adding white first would make the green really pop out. But in the end, I found that it didn't work as well as I thought. Also, a tip if you're using stencils, especially on this scale, use a really dry brush. You may have to do a few passes, but the drier your brush is, the better your letters will come out in the end. So here's how it's looking. It actually looks a lot brighter on camera than it is in person. I really was not happy with it and figured people would not be able to see it from afar because they're not going to actually be able to get too close to looking at this miniature. So I decided to try the same process on another side of the box with black paint. And so black was the base and then I added a little bit of green on top. And I feel like this one pops out so much more and it will be easier to see from afar. So here's the two compared to each other and they may look okay on camera, but you can see it so much better in person on top of the black paint. I then used a brown that was a similar color to the chipboard that I used to make the box and went back and added details to all of my letters so it read just a little bit easier. And once the litter box was dry enough to be handled again, I had a stencil for that one as well. It says high density composter, do not open. I don't know if the science really works there, but it sounds kind of intimidating. So I decided to go with it. And so I did the same process here, although this is just going to be straight black paint. I'm doing a very dry brush over the stencil and I'm having to hold it in place because it is rounded. I think it did an okay job. It was obviously a little bit more difficult because of the rounded surface, but I think you can read what it says. 
I did the same process with some white paint and a toothpick and carefully went through and helped the letters out a little bit so they were a bit easier to read. And in the end, this is how it was looking. I think you can read it better. It does look a little like bubble letter, but again, this will be kind of from afar. So in the end, I'm happy with the idea behind this piece and being able to let the viewer see or understand, I guess, what is happening in this space should they happen to find it while looking at my project. Finally, it was time to add on the control panel. I just used some tacky glue and tacked it onto the edge. I really liked how it was looking without any paint on it, so I just left it unpainted and covered it with some Mod Podge to blend the texture in with the Mod Podge that's already on the litter box. I also had a friend suggest some rails, and I like this idea to perhaps steady the ramp. One thing I do know about cats is that they get spooked really easily, so I think this is a good way to make sure that the ramp is steady, especially if the spaceship might be experiencing some turbulence. So I added those on and allowed them to dry. I will be returning to the litter in the future because as you could see in the last few clips, it was looking kind of sad, but I do need it to dry completely before I can do anything with it. So here is the space in the back. I need to clean up some foam, I guess, back there, but I think it will be a cool detail to find for those who are looking. Now that the ship model is complete, and I finished up the litter box, we can move on to making the map. I had a hard time figuring out the scale of the ship. I mean, it is this size in my hand, so that's the real life scale, but if I was standing inside of the ship, how big is it really? Thankfully, I was able to chat with Crystal from Hi-Ho Hyperdrive. And actually, the main character from Hi-Ho Hyperdrive, Rover, had previously sent in a book and a few other gifts to the captain. So they're good friends. Crystal, who had created the ship, the Nelly Bell, suggested that I look at it as a retail space. Is it a mall or is it like a gas station? What is the size compared to one of those buildings? And that helped me so much to help just visualize what kind of space I was working with. So in my mind, the captain's ship is like a strip mall that is six stores wide and there's three of them on top of each other. So strip mall, strip mall, strip mall. <laughs> Six stores wide. And that is what helped me start to plan out the space. And of course, the most important part is the cargo bay, which is where the entire captain's quarters is held. And that's what I've been building for almost four years now, or over four years. I don't, it's all blurring together. <laughs> so I'll walk you through roughly my process of creating the map. Once I had finalized the design of the model ship, I could take a front and side picture and then put that into Procreate. Then I could sketch over it and start to figure out where my spaces are going to be. Most importantly, the space that's going to contain the captain's quarters. So this was the final idea that I came up with. You can see the captain's quarters in two places because this is an elevation and a floor plan. Then I did a very rough sketch with some vector lines in Inkscape. This program was going to allow me to easily fill spaces and hopefully get the map aesthetic that I was going for. The first thing I had to do was work on my very rough sketch by putting some of the pieces together. I needed a general outline so that I could show the size of the ship and then put all the spaces within. So this was the side view, and then for the top-down view, I just started over again with an entire oval instead of the sketch line that was rather bumpy. Then I could add on the wings and make this all one piece. I really want this to look like a professional map, so that's why I'm putting so much effort into this. This is going to be the item in the captain's quarters that really shows, hey, this is actually part of an entire ship. So I wanted to do the best job that I could. I don't want to do a map that shows really detailed hallways or stairs, just kind of general spaces. So those that are using the map know just what direction to go to, to find what they're looking for. 
Also, I learned how to use layers. That was very important for this project so that I could have my outline filled with blue and then I could have my gray spaces on top of that. I'd never used them before, but I think they'll come in handy in the future. The whole point of this map is to highlight the captain's quarters, the portion that I'm building. So I wanted to make those spaces a special color. I'm also going to be adding dark gray boxes that represent the 17th century portion of the project. I'm going to also put in the very distinct shape of that piece as well. I have always imagined that the captain's quarters was inside of a cargo bay, so that is perfect. This is going to be cargo A, or cargo bay A, although that's kind of hard to say. <laughs> oh, that all just rhymed. And then I'm also going to put in the transportation door, which I realized needed a way to get out of the ship. So I added this green clearance area that's going to be what needs to stay clear so that people can actually be transported and not you know, run into a bunch of cargo boxes. I added the you are here dot, the typical one you would see maybe at a mall, and then started labeling all of the areas. This was really fun to imagine, although I'm not sure I'm 100% set on everything. So if you do have some ideas or you see something that you think doesn't quite make sense, please let me know in the comments. Um, all of this is made up and imaginary, so <laughs> I'm not set on anything except for the location of the captain's quarters because obviously that's really important to my project. I added the map key, which was honestly my favorite part of all my fourth grade projects when you had to learn to make a map key. I love making those little symbols. And then I decided to make a background for the map. I figured just plain white would it would look okay but I wanted it to look a little bit more exciting so I decided to put a dull blue background behind the ship and I think it does make it look a little bit more professional I could maybe even add like a galaxy back there I'm not quite sure let me know if you have any thoughts but at the moment this is the captain's quarters map or the captain's ship map and also I had a couple of my patrons mention that I needed to change the kitchen to the galley and the canteen to the mess hall so I'm updating those like I said I'm not married to this map yet I haven't printed it out yet so I can still change things if I need to now I wish I could print out this map and show me installing it on the project but this printer that prints color honestly hasn't worked for years. You have to push every button for about seven seconds each and then turn it off and back on again and press the buttons all over again to get it to do anything. And this one is black and white only and paper jams every other print. So I hate both of these printers. I'm probably not gonna be sponsored by HP anytime soon. But I do plan to get myself a new printer next month. So I'm very excited to be able to print the map and install it in a future video. Speaking of next month, it is almost Beetle Gust. That is Beetle juice themed videos all August long. I cannot wait to show you what I have in mind. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Virus protection. <laughs> Very important. Water all over my script. Ew. I'm gonna update the board, but how many lines do a map and a litter box get? I'm thinking one. That's a wrap. After Beetle Gust, we're gonna have to do all Captain all the time until it goes to the museum. So just warning you, if you're a fan of Captain's Quarters, you're about to get two months of pure Captain's Quarters. <laughs> Because I've got a lot to do. I've got a lot to do.